Okay. There we go. All right. So, um, last week uh, that we had a class, we were carrying on with our portraits, and we're going to carry on with that a little bit more today. Um, so, we've looked at how to mix skin colors um, and how to create depth within a picture, and we talked a bit about contrast as well, using the contrast to make um, the, the portrait look three-dimensional and have this... Um, uh, contrast in order to make sure that things like the eyes have this kind of glint to them which really brings um, a portrait to life. Um, the other thing we looked at was uh, Stephanie Ledoux who um, uses collage in her work but then paints the portraits over the top. Um, so um, I've been working on that one as you know, been working on the, the portrait of the girl, um, I think it's an African girl um, with the face paint on things. So I did a little bit more of that last time uh, and this evening I've started to collage into the, the background a little bit more um, but I've got this, um, I found this artist or I know, this artist that I know of at least um, uh, called Patrick Bremer who just uses collage to do all of his portraits. So um, this is something that I do myself anyway so I thought it was quite interesting uh, from that point of view and I can show you my portrait again that I did using collage. Um, so we'll have a quick look at the um, the wall. So these are the skin uh, charts that we've used before and if you remember um, to we started with an underpainting first of all didn't we? So with underpainting and then started applying more colors back over the top and I was using the burnt umber and ultramarine to get the really dark colors and then um, adding in others to create the warmth or the shadows or the uh, blue sort of areas within the picture. So on the girl up there in the corner that you can see, I use some blues within the paint or more blue than some of the burnt umber perhaps to create these scent, uh, ideas of adding a bit of blue in. And quite a few people seem to have found that very useful. Um, these color charts that we've been using are all on the website so if you want to have a closer look at any of those that's where they are um, but if you've got any questions or anything about mixing skin colors please ask me and I'll see if I can help you as best as I can uh, during the lesson uh, as you can see there's different kinds of skin tones on these different charts which is really going to help you um, but basically the idea behind these is that you're starting with some basic colors at the top so you've got um, a basic skin color on this one. You've got white and you've got a burnt sienna. So mixing white and burnt sienna together, you get this um, basic skin color. And then as we move down, you can see what happens to those skin tones when you start adding um, these different colors. So such as cadmium red and raw sienna or raw umber, sorry, um, cadmium yellow, um, lemon yellow and ultramarine you can see how the skin tones uh, start to change there or they can be mixed in with the other colors that you're using so down the bottom there the third mixture that kind of bluey gray we've got some of that um, sort of bluey gray appearing on some parts of the, the face of my girl just over here that i've been painting um, with a with a, obviously with a different skin color but um, We've still got some of those bluey greys appearing within the picture as well. Um, so have a close look at those if you're still working on skin tones. I've still got a little bit more to do on mine. So um, you'll be able to see me working on that and ask questions and stuff as well. So um, I'll just bring up um, <clears throat> I'll bring up a Stephanie Ledoux picture just over here. I've just got a lot of the other ones. So they don't wiggle about. There we go. Excuse me. Right, okay, so um, the Stephanie Ledoux ones uh, that we've got here all use um, different collected and found materials on them uh, to create um, different layers and it, of areas of interest. I suspect some of the materials will be collected from different parts of the world as well, but some of them will have been used, um, as I mentioned before, we've got pictures of um, sometimes 
can't see it on this one. So, oh, there's on the middle one there, we can see there's a picture of, um, I think it's like a sculpture or something just in the middle there. That one. Oh, there's some people, <laughs> some wrestlers or something in there. So uh, some of the imagery isn't quite uh, related, but um, it certainly makes the picture much more interesting. There is other areas you can see where the dots are at the top there where um, some bits have been printed over. I've got to the stage of adding collage and pattern in. There's some collected patterns at the top there as well. And this halo around the edge, as I mentioned before. Now I'll show you this other artist um, who actually just uses collage to paint all of his pictures, um, which I thought was really interesting as well. Um, as I said, his name's Patrick Bremer. And let me see if I can find those now. There we go. So Patrick Bremer, he works quite large actually um, for collage, I would say. Um, but all of the all of the colour and the detail on here has been completely collaged together. I don't believe there is any paint on here at all. Um, so it's quite an interesting technique and certainly this is something that I've done but using just words because that's the sort of thing that I often do with portraits is I cut out words of say poetry or um, or lines of um, facts and things and I collage them into a picture um, in a bit more of a clinical way than this. This is much more of a torn technique. But you can see how there's lots of different layers from, um, I think it's mostly from magazines that he uses that. So, and there's little bits of words and things appearing within the picture as well. So um, that's certainly, if anyone was interested in doing something like that, that's certainly something that I could um, also do with everybody. But as I mentioned a second ago, I've got a, a video. I think it's quite a short one, which is quite good. So I'll show you that. Um, <clears throat> right now, Let me just get it ready. There we go. Right, and go over here. There we go. Okay, so um, so that was that was his work, and you could see some similarities in the way that um, our other artist here, Stephanie Ledoux, has used a collage uh, with different images and different pieces of text and all sorts of things appearing in the background here. So it's a really kind of layered uh, technique here as well. And what I'm going to be doing uh, this evening is I'm going to um, be layering in some more collage and perhaps even doing parts of the face uh, using collage as well. Um, so all I've got here is um, some bits of map, um, some scraps of paper that I've found and I'm just going to do a little bit of collage work on that and then work back over the top um, with my um, paints as well. So this is, this is one example of um, something that I've personally done a little while back and you can see on here that uh, I've been using just 
words on here. So this basically, this is a sketchbook just to sort of have a go at different things really uh, with regards to portrait. But um, I've used different words and things um, that I've had sort of, because when I do a, a collage painting, I often have lots of little bits um, left over and lying around. So I've used all of those elements in um, this portrait here. Um, so that's certainly something you could try out um, if you're at a loose end for something to do next or if you've finished what you've done before. Here on this one, I've used more patterns and things within the portrait as well. And then um, later on, you can take it a bit further. This was also a collage where I've um, drawn back over the top of the collaged areas. Um, so his beard has been collaged just there and his hat has been collaged as well. And this one much more loose. It's hard to show it when it's um, biro because it's got a reflective quality to it. But um, we've got all these patterns in here. And these are all just using scraps of paper from my um, other past projects as well. Okay, so if we look at our lovely girl that I've been working on over here, um, you can see, let me just, uh, let me just get that up. Coach, consultant, Oops. or mentor who is struggling to get. Enlarge that. There we go. Right. Okay. So on here, I um, you can see that I've got the silhouette, the outline of the girl, um, and on the photo over here, you can see that the the, the negative space, which is the space in the background, um, I've started to be a lot more experimental, much like Stephanie Ledoux um, perhaps has done. Um, so I'm building up layers of different color. Um, using these papers and then I'm going to work back over the top in certain areas using paint as well. So I hope I can get through most of this is, this evening so that um, we can move forward and perhaps try something different out next. Um, but um, let's see how we get on. So we're going to continue doing that this evening. Um, I hope that uh, you've all got plenty of that to do. I, I felt that before we um, broke up for the um, for the half term, I felt that a lot of you still had quite a bit to do. So um, I hope that's the case. Uh, and you're enjoying yourself as well. OK. All right. So um, basically at this point, what I'm going to continue doing here, oh, just me popping myself on the screen as well. Um, so what I'm basically doing on um, the, in this session is using a mixed media approach, I suppose. So we're mixing up collage and we're mixing up um, paint, acrylic paints, and layering those um, over each other to create um, the rest of the portrait. Um, I don't actually get um, that far. I, I don't quite get down to the base to do the uh, necklace. Um, during this session, but I managed to get most of the headdress done during this session, which is uh, pretty good. I'm pretty pleased about that. Okay, so um, anyway, in just a second, I do eventually get started, I promise you. So um, to begin with, what I'm doing down there is I'm applying lots of layers of um, this um, patterned uh, paper that we've got here. A lot of these papers are papers that I've used in previous projects uh, that I've got left over that I can apply into um, this piece just here. So that's uh, what I'm doing at this point. Um, and I'm not doing the skin color here, but I am using a dark color to create a little bit of contrast between um, the background, which is quite light, and the portrait. Uh, yes, and the portrait. So I'm making things stand out um, much more by applying this dark textured pattern. Uh, one of the things I liked about it as well was that um, I'm tearing up the news, the uh, the paper so that the pattern doesn't resemble what it did before but makes up uh, quite a new pattern and texture on there as well. So 
So um, what I'm doing now is I'm using uh, white paper um, over the top of my portrait to add extra highlights to those um, little, um, I suppose they're pom-poms, I don't know what you'd call them, um, they're on the top of a head there. So I've used some white on there to um, add um, extra highlights and I did do a little bit of that on the little dots on her uh, face makeup as well or face uh, paint and here I'm you I'm using some more collage paper to add in the dark areas or the black areas on the headband uh, and then some strips that I've cut with a pair of scissors so really here I'm using a whole range of different techniques to create the effect but you can see now that um, areas of the collage are crossing over with areas of the paint which um, you know, it challenges you in different ways and gets you to use the paint in different ways and use the different materials in different ways to create um, some different effects. And um, really just it's quite fun because you, you don't always know exactly what's going to happen. But um, when things don't quite go the way you might expect, it challenges you to correct them a little bit. So just on that little bit of red paint I did there um, on the headband, um, I also scratched with the back of my brush to create some lines uh, for the, the beads that go across there. Um, so that's something you can do as well. You can, uh, while the paint's wet, you can tip your brush over and scratch into it. You can use other materials as well to scratch into it, of course. Um, here I'm doing the beads, obviously, and um, I've used a little bit of uh, um, burnt umber and ultramarine to create a nice dark shadowy um, color to really lift out those little pom-pom things um, and I've painted around the red beads too but I do come back in a bit and add some highlights to make them stand out a little bit more as well so that's uh, a little bit of layering going on there layering the different techniques um, or the different colors and tints and shadows over the top of each other uh, there I just add a little bit of uh, extra tint into the work too. Um, I really enjoy working like this um, as I said because it is a lot of fun to see what sort of effects you can get and what things are going to turn out like as you're working. Um, also as you know I really love collage, I love the kind of um, the energy that it creates in a picture as well. Uh, so the background of the, the this picture with the torn bits of paper um, and the angles in the tears creates a really interesting um, and energetic effect but it also allows you to play, on, play around the colour and uh, you're also being forced to use the colours that you've got if you've got collected materials of course as well. On some of my other collage pieces what I often do is I print um, words and colours out and use that as my palette to do the whole of a picture. So um, again, a lot of fun. Those stripy bits down the bottom um, in the background there were um, I used an ink, um, I used ink and a sponge to create lots of line uh, textures that I could put into a picture as well. Uh, and I so I've, that's from a previous project too, and I've just saved those bits of paper and reused them um, in the background there as well. So on those little beads, I first of all painted a slightly different green to the background and then used some golden yellow and another uh, sort of very strong green. I can't remember the name of it now, um, but just over the top of that to help lift those up a little bit as well. And some, to some degrees, you've got to allow a little bit of flexibility when you're doing um, colours, unless you really want to get those colours precise. I'm just having fun here and experimenting with the collage and with um, the paints together so I'm not too worried about getting things exactly as they should be I'm just having a little bit of fun so here this is uh, this was quite interesting too um, I've used um, some orange paper that I had left over from a previous project because we've got kind of an or a nice bold orangey sort of color here um, on the face makeup um, or for face paint so I'm uh, I've painted it 
uh, so I've collaged it in and then I've painted back over the top with the acrylic, but using uh, kind of much thinner paint, like a, almost like a wash back in over the top there to add shadow to that orange paper. So you get bits of the orange coming through. Uh, and I used um, Burnt Umber and Ultramarine, but watered down to create that effect on there. There's a little bit of fun now adding the pattern on there too. And again, once you've put the white down, if you think the white is too severe, what you can do is wait for it to dry and then do another wash of or a glaze of paint back over the top of that as well. So just finishing off the uh, skin here. Uh, and I'm using a white. It creates kind of a gray effect in the paint um, when you've got the burnt under umber and ultramarine, but then you can start blending it. And again, you can start layering some warmer tones, uh, some warmer sort of um, color back over the top too. So the paint started to, the face paint started to merge in with the face a little bit more. And there's probably more work to do on that, but um, uh, with the time that we've got this evening, I'm just trying to get through um, adding some other areas of detail in there as well. Putting in the eyebrow, I hadn't remembered to do that before, so putting that in as well. And the shadow that comes down the side of her face there. It's interesting as you as you sit looking watching this video you can see other things that you would like to do um, so perhaps I'll do that another time there we go so it's come together quite nicely there is other stuff I would do little tweaks and things add some shadows and things onto the skin and some highlights but overall a lot of fun was had this evening and I hope you enjoyed watching it. If you've got any questions, please leave them uh, down below and um, I will do my best to answer any questions you've got. Um, thanks for any questions that were sent this week as well. Thank you very much and um, I shall see you in the next video or in the next lesson. Have a fantastic week. Bye-bye.